Welcome to Second Congregational Church. I'm Reverend Sean Guerin, and I've been away for a little bit. My family had COVID, unfortunately. We've all recovered, mostly. Ashley's still feeling a little bit, so if you can keep her in your prayers. Uh, but I'm, I'm excited to be back at work. The kids, they didn't even flinch. Uh, the doctor said, you never know with COVID. It's just, you know, everybody has a different response. So uh, it's something we should really take seriously because I've seen the spectrum, you know, the kids not getting anything, me kind of getting a, you know, mild but strong case, but actually really felt the effects. Um, so I'm still gonna wear my mask, still being careful, and I hope and, and encourage everybody to continue doing that. Uh, that said, as I've been away, I've been really thinking about how to, you know, how to come into 2021. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to take my hobby, what I've been reading on the side, and bring it to you guys. Uh, maybe it, you'll like it. You know, maybe this, there's something in it for, for all of us. Uh, so we're going to take a look at this, the, the Dead Sea Scrolls, this, this, this discovery that we found in the 50s. Uh, and I'll talk more about it, but it's been such an, a wild experience to open it up and, and ask, you know, is there more to the Jesus story that I didn't know? And so we're going to dig into that and look more. But before we do, let's kind of posture ourselves and say, we're going to, you know, since you can't come to church and we don't have the beautiful hymns by Alexander, you know, and the violin uh, where you get that full effect, Ellie's going to try to dive in into the camera and, and pull you in by worshiping and, and singing songs that are easy to kind of follow along and, and might get you singing along with. So feel free to embrace that. We want to bring the spirit to where you are. So I hope that you will uh, really get in a posture of worship and listen as Ellie leads us in worship. <laughs> Take a moment to remember 
Let us pray. Holy God, 2021 has not been any easier than 2020. So we're, we're looking to you to reach out your hand and guide us through this time. These are times when our faith gets tested, but these are times when Jesus' teachings are ever more uh, ever more helpful to us as we learn how to uh, be more self-controlled, be more patient, be more kind and loving, generous, as we learn how to persevere, as we learn how to forgive, as we learn how to find joy in all seasons, as we learn how to calm the storms around us, and not be troubled. We hold on to what your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, holy is your name. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Speak truth to my heart. For my own thoughts betray me. Breathe life on my bones. This desert is leaving me thirsty for hope in my soul. For the sorrow of the world is feeling heavy. Holy Spirit, come. Speak truth to my heart. Speak truth to my heart. My own thoughts betray me. Breathe life on my Every family has secrets. They can be good secrets, but if you say the words family secret, you may lean in the direction of, yeah, that's not something we talk about. I mean, a good family secret might be how grandma makes the sauce, but there are family secrets that are intentionally 
secrets. Things nobody wants to talk about and for good reason. It can shake up the narrative of your life. It can shake up the narrative of your whole family's lives. Over my COVID vacation, I didn't get too sick, in case you're wondering. I'm more of a worrier, so even if I really was sick, my worry about how sick I would actually get was worse. But over the vacation, something really special happened. I spoke to my grandfather for the first time ever. I don't have any living grandparents, or at least so I thought. Through a strange course of events, an Ancestry.com test and subscription, I found out that I wasn't the last Garen. In fact, there were a lot of Garens. I found out that my real uncle was an astronaut, and that I have cousins who live right here in Connecticut. If you were to check my Facebook notifications, you would see a steady stream of friend requests from what seems to be a whole tribe of Garrens. It's been so surreal for me. I'm a family guy, I'm close to all my siblings, so to hear that I had a huge family somewhere blew my mind. But the most important person I have found is my grandpa, my real biological grandfather. When you get coronavirus, you start to think, maybe I should reach out. I really wanted to meet my grandfather in person. But when you're sick and have COVID, you decide to, maybe, maybe I'll make some calls. You never know these days. As soon as we spoke, he said, I didn't know what to say. But he said, I'm your grandpa. My heart melted. He spoke like he loved me already. And he even said he was sorry for how this all happened. But I said right away, you didn't know. He didn't know. I didn't know. Someone knew. It was different back then, I suppose. But for some reason, the dots weren't connected. No one said anything, no one inquired, and life went on. Yet somehow I always felt like something was missing in the story. And looking back, I do remember the whispers. I remember something not fully adding up. Seeing my dad have the last name Garen, but also having another last name on his baseball trophies from when he was a kid, always made me wonder how that happened. It was never addressed, and if I asked, it quickly got shot down. It would have been hard for me to articulate any real suspicions, so in the end, that stone remained unturned. Learning all of this about my new background doesn't change who I am. It just adds to my story and opens the door for more inquiry more digging, and more importantly, it allows me to know more about who I am. I would have never found out if I had stopped asking, if I had stopped seeking, if I had stopped knocking on virtual doors. Jesus tells his disciples in more ways than one this central teaching that can be summed up in Luke Chapter 11, verses 9 through 13. He says, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open. Ask, A, seek, S, knock, K. Ask. It's a good, easy to remember. For everyone who asks receives. And everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. In fact, the very first words Jesus sa says to his disciples in the Gospel of John 1, verse 38, is, what are you looking for? What are you searching for? What are you seeking? 
This is where all stories begin. This is where all the quests start with a search. I don't think religion was ever intended to be a set of answers that one should memorize. And Jesus saw when he came walking around and going to church, he saw that this was what religion had become. So what did he do? Jesus tells his disciples that if they want to know who he is and what God is up to, in the very next verse, in verse 39 of John chapter 1, he says, you got to come see for yourselves. See, that's what Jesus did. Jesus came looking for those who wanted more than just religion, more than just a set of answers to memorize or check off. He was looking for those who knew something was missing in the equation. We see it today in my generation's plea to be more spiritual and less religious. It's kind of a strange thing to say, no? I mean, I would have never tried to be spiritual if not for church, if not for religion. In a day and age when churches are striving to connect with people, Maybe we should listen to that, to be spiritual, but not religious, even though it sounds so strange and foreign. But before we do that, and we're going to answer that question, not today. Today, we're going to get to this root cause. See, before we ask that question, before we ask how we can be more spiritual, but not religious, we have to ask, how did we become so religious that spirituality declined? To be sure, I felt myself, I felt this myself when I was becoming a pastor. There was a number of fellow seminarians who had this same itch to connect with the spiritual part of Christianity. To find Jesus, the spiritual teacher, who never wrote anything down, but lived such a, a life, a life that was so rich that everybody wrote stories about him because he embodied what the perfect life looked like for human beings. But often, I found, Jesus' teachings seem confusing. And by confusing, I mean that sometimes I wish there was a, an abridged version of the sayings of Jesus that I could just read and reflect upon. With all of the denominations and interpretations that we have, with the way that we have such sharp disagreements in who and what Jesus was or represented, I always wondered if there was something missing. And if there was a way to make Christianity more clear, there have been many times that I myself have come to church and performed my religious duties, but kind of left spirituality out of it. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's done that. So what do we do in an age when Christianity is being asked where is the spirituality? How come I don't feel it in my bones? In my prayers, I felt the Holy Spirit calling me to do that little ask abbreviation. You know, ask, seek, knock. I felt the Holy Spirit say, Sean, ask me. Ask me, I dare you. So I said, is there more to the story? This prayer led me to seek. So I asked the Spirit, are there more books that might help me understand Jesus clearer? I knocked. Is there a door you can lead me to? Hundreds of podcasts later, 
YouTube and Yale lectures online, physical and audio books. I found myself reading a book by Elaine Pagels called The Gnostic Gospels. Elaine Pagels is a religion scholar who found herself asking many of the same questions I asked. In one of her books, she writes, I am a historian of religion. And so as I visited church, I wondered when and how being a Christian became virtually synonymous with accepting a certain set of beliefs. From historical reading, I knew that Christianity had survived brutal persecution and flourished for generations, even centuries, before Christians formulated what they believed into creeds. Pagels was a seeker herself, someone who found herself disconnected from the religious version of Christianity she grew up with, but longing to connect with what Christianity was trying to communicate to her spiritually. So she continued seeking and found herself reading not just the Gospels we find in our pew and confirmation Bibles. Pagels began to look at other Gospels and texts that we recently discovered in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Around 1950, one of the greatest discoveries of the 20th century was the Dead Sea Scroll Library that has within it some of the earliest Christian texts ever written. Within that library, we found the Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel of Judas, and the Gospel of Mary. Over the next few months or so, I'd like to open these books up with you and look at them to see if they might have something for us within it to consider. I've been reading through them myself, and while I know that they are still very much debated among scholars, I think it would be good for us to look at it for ourselves. For me, the story of these Gospels reminds me of the discovery of my grandfather. There was always a question in my mind if there was more to the story. I figure since every family has some secrets, might there be some secrets within the family of Christianity? Things no one ever talked about. Things that wouldn't change what Christianity was, but rather would have the potential to add a clearer image of what we already believe. I know that finding out my full story personally has made me feel more whole. It's encouraged me to keep seeking, keep asking, keep knocking. The Gospel of Thomas, the first one of these books we're going to look at, begins exactly how you might imagine Jesus would begin one of his lessons. I found a certain humor in it, as the mystique of other Gospels might make a strict Christian nervous, like I might discover something troubling or counter to what I always believed. The book opens just like that. It's believed that Jesus had Thomas sit down and write these sayings. And in the first two stanzas, here we are. We're listening to Jesus. At least that's what it says. That's what we discovered. It says this. These are the hidden sayings that the living Yeshua spoke and Yehuda Tama, the twin, recorded. And he said, whoever discovers what these sayings mean will not taste death. Yeshua, that's Jesus in Hebrew. Yeshua said, seek and do not stop seeking until you find. And when you find, you will be troubled. But when you're troubled, you will marvel and rule over all. <laughs> when I found out that I had a living grandfather, I didn't pursue it right away. 
I was nervous. I was scared. I was troubled. But when I continued to ask, seek, and knock, a door was opened, and so many of my questions started to get answered. I knew God had led me here. Maybe God has led us to these texts that were hidden for us from, for so long. Maybe they can answer some questions for us. That question of what happened to our spirituality? Or why don't people get it these days? Maybe they can give us a taste of this Jesus that is spiritual, more personal, more clear about what he was trying to communicate to his disciples. Something that is more than just a creed. Something that goes deep into your soul and pushes you to discover the very nature of who you are and what this life is all about. Amen. <laughs>
before I go, I just wanted to say thank you to my whole church community. Uh, every time our family needs something, you all are always there to support us. Uh, from dinners to uh, Max dropping my guitar off to Jackie bringing me Coca-Cola with no caffeine. <sighs> you truly are a family to the Garens, and I so appreciate that. I kind of, you know, don't want to say this, but if you're looking for a church, this, this is a really good church to be a part of it. You know, you don't want to share. I don't want to share every, all this goodness with you, but, but Jesus tells me I, I should. So uh, whether you want to join us in person or online, really understand this. We believe here at Second Congregational that church is a family, like a family outside of your, of your family. And so if you would like to be a part of this family, you can reach out to Sean at 2cc.org uh, or Max at max at 2cc.org. And you could, or you could just go to our website, 2cc.org, and you could find out more about how to get plugged in, how to join our church, how to learn more about what our church teaches and, and what we do. We still are a church that's very much alive and it's very excited about opening up again. So in the meantime, feel free to join our family virtually as we uh, get ready to, to open up and meet again and have that big family reunion I know that a lot of us are looking forward to. Go in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'll see you next week.